Right, so on this video, I'm going to attempt to answer one of the most asked questions I get, one of the most discussed topics, I'd say, in our Rapzilla community, and probably not a topic I should be tackling in the middle of an album rollout week. Should we, as Christians, be listening to secular music? Here's the takeaway. What's going on, y'all? My name is Ruslan. I am a hip-hop artist, creative entrepreneur. Before I get all the way into this video, I first have to let you guys know off top, this video is designed and intended for Christians. And so if you're not a Christian, what I'm about to discuss here doesn't really apply to you. You can keep watching if you want, or you can just turn it off. Now, in the Christian community, there's always been several levels of extremes in terms of how people engage with art and in, interact with culture and music and all these things. The most conservative one would probably be the only worship camp. If you're on Rapzilla, you probably don't fall in this camp, or maybe you do. And then there's the only Christian camp. They only listen to music that is Christian, labeled Christian, branded Christian. Then there tends to be another camp that's a bit more loose and they listen to Christian music, worship music, but they also listen to some secular music and clean music, meaning that they would get the clean versions of a lot of their favorite albums. And then there's the camp that listens to a lot of different things, a variety of different things, all these things included, but they also listen to music that comes from a Christian worldview, maybe has some profanity in it. And then there's the anything goes, the other far extreme. And these two extremes don't really get along, right? And I've kinda, uh, you know, been a part of all these different groups. Sometimes I go through seasons where I just need worship music and I don't even listen to Christian hip hop. I just listen to worship music. And then other times I, you know, I, I listen to everything. The elephant in the room, it's obvious, this community, the Christian hip hop community, has been shifting more and more and more, meaning that before we would have Christian artists who wanted to be successful and wanted to make it in the secular mainstream general market. Now we have Christians who just wanna be secular artists. And that line is completely disappearing where now we have Christians who oftentimes just wanna be secular artists that are vulgar and completely indifferent from the rest of the secular artists, meaning their faith isn't even a reflection in their art, on their worldview. I think as I'm growing, I think as I'm growing as a father and I have a son now, and I've been looking for balance and I've been looking for some types of scriptural position on what is appropriate and where should we fall in these positions. Now I know in the comment section, you guys are gonna light me up from every extreme <laughs> and that's okay. One of the verses and one of the ideas that I've been wrestling with is this idea of making making good look evil and making evil look good. The verse that comes to mind is Isaiah 5:20. Isaiah 5:20 says, "Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter." I would say wherever you fall on the spectrum of music, of art, the thing that we cannot do as Christians, and remember I'm speaking to Christians here, is that we cannot embrace, endorse, celebrate, create, be a part of art that calls evil things good and good things evil. That is probably one of the most confusing things about where we are as a culture and, and in this climate. Everything from politics to social issues, there's a lot of just confusion. And when that line gets blurred, when the line between good and evil gets blurred, it, it could be very damaging for our own worldview and it could be damaging to the masses and what's popular. I'll give you guys an example and I'll parallel it to movies. Denzel Washington is one of my favorite actors. Denzel Washington's a Christian, but Denzel Washington stars in non-Christian movies movies all the time. Me and my wife just recently went back and saw the movie Training Day. Love that movie. Uh, came out I think in the early 2000s and in the movie Denzel Washington is cussing. He's doing all kinds of sketchy stuff. In the movie it is very 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 clear that Denzel Washington is a bad guy. 
right? He's a Christian actor who's playing a bad guy. I have no problem with that. It's evident, right? And I think in music, there are Christians who make secular music or are in the mainstream market. Examples are practical like U2 and Tori Kelly and Owl City and now where Lecrae is elevated to. These are Christians who make secular music. And then there are also Christians who make music that maybe has some profanity in it. And I'll think of a guy like John Bellion who has some profanity in his music, but for the most part, he's not really calling evil good and good evil. There's a couple songs that I kind of feel uncomfortable listening to in terms of some of the content where it sounds like he's glorifying sin. But for the most part, I would say his music is reflective of someone that is not an explicitly Christian artist, is not overtly trying to preach the gospel, but he's a Christian in culture. And I don't have a problem with that style of music. I think what we're seeing more and more of, especially in some of the Christian hip hop circles, is that we're seeing Christian artists celebrating and promoting artists that are completely polar opposite worldview. And we're endorsing music that have completely blurred the lines between good and evil or that are just flat out saying good is evil and evil is good. They maybe mock Christians who like to read their Bible and go to church. Those are good things that sometimes get mocked and are called evil and are looked down upon. Or they're taking their struggles and they're glorifying them and they're making themselves seem like victims. Like, ah oh man, I'm just a victim to my struggle and I have no control over this sin. And all of a sudden the struggle becomes glorified instead of calling it for what it is, which is our own turmoil and our own flesh and our sin that needs to be dealt with by the grace and the sanctification process of the Holy Spirit. I think that is problematic. And I think we have to draw the lines there. If I'm an artist, I'm a Christian artist, I collaborate with secular artists, I play secular venues, but you know what? My faith comes before my artistry, my character, my integrity comes before my genre, and when I'm on a song with a secular artist, they kind of respect my worldview. They're not gonna say something crazy and they're not gonna say something completely polar opposite of what I represent. They're not going to call evil good and good evil. They're not gonna make fun of the things that I hold near and dear as a believer they tend to have a, a, a respect for these things. And I think as a artist, as a creative, we have to be careful what we're endorsing. We have to be careful what we are participating in. For me, this looks like a song like Mask Off by Future. Percocet, Molly Percocet. The entire song is glorifying the use of prescription drugs. We see this, multiple artists doing this thing, glorifying, celebrating the use of prescription drugs, making something that is evil, which is addiction, which is horrible. We have an opioid crisis, we have people dying, heroin, overdoses at our all time high, prescription drug overdoses, mental health issues, and we're saying these things that are evil are good, and we're gonna turn up and celebrate it. Like, and it's, it's disgusting and it's even more disgusting when you see Christians doing it that are endorsing and giving a platform to an artist that whether he wants to be or not is a role model. And you, maybe you're older, maybe you're disconnected from it. I have a niece that's 16, I have a little sister that's 17. And it's scary when you hear them sing some of these songs and you start questioning, are they dabbling in prescription drugs? Are they doing hard drugs? Where are they at in this whole process? And I'm not saying that every Christian is celebrating the use of Percocet and drugs and Molly and all these different things. I'm saying that when we support this type of music, we're essentially endorsing and supporting a worldview that's very contrary to what we should hold near and dear as believers. Is there a time if you're an artist, if you're a creative, to listen to secular music? Yeah, sure. Is there a time to listen to Future or Amigos or whoever? Yeah, I would say I consume that, that type of music. Uh, more as a missionary, more as a student, more as trying to understand where culture is going, where the aesthetic and the sound is going, but they are not the soundtrack for my life, not what I meditate on. I'm gonna give you guys another verse to close this whole idea out, and it's Philippians 4, 8. Uh, many of us know this verse, but it says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So the question isn't should you or shouldn't you listen to secular music. The question is, are you meditating on things that are true, that are noble, that are right, that are pure, admirable, uh, anything that is excellent or praiseworthy? Are we thinking about these things? Are we meditating on these things? Are, we, are those the things that are the soundtrack for our lives? Macro, 
lives, right? Sometimes if you're in the gym, maybe you wanna to listen to some trap music, the beat gets you pumped, but I'm not talking about isolated issues. I'm talking about what is the overall soundtrack of your life? Not should we listen to or not listen to secular music. So in the comments section below, I'll be in there chopping it up with you guys. What do you guys think about this topic? Where are you at with secular music? Are you someone that consumes secular music or not? Uh, if you don't consume secular music, do you watch secular TVs and play violent video games? I'm curious because I tend to, I think that's a bit inconsistent. But if you do listen to secular music, do you approach it more as a missionary or are you completely just indulging in music that's really not reflective or indicative of a worldview that we're called to have and that's really blurring the lines between good and evil? And are you meditating on the things we know we should be listening to? And so for me personally, people ask me, what do you listen to? I'll be honest with you guys, I don't listen to a whole lot of music. I listen to stuff that I like. One of the albums, a secular album that I like this year, probably get crucified in the comment section, is Jay-Z's 444 album. Obviously there are some things that, you know, some profanity and vulgar things and some things that I don't fully endorse, but overall he's talking about financial literacy, he's confessing his sin, he's repenting, he's talking about therapy, marriage, he's talking about changing, killing his ego. That is a record I could ride to. Even that isn't something that I listen to every day. The stuff I'm listening to every day is the stuff one, I'm creating and my artists are creating and two, I'm listening to podcasts, I'm listening to sermons, audio books. Those are the things that are the soundtracks for my life. And then I'm obviously listening to, you know, like the new Lecrae album, the new KB album. I think Christian hip hop has came a long way or Christians in hip hop have came a long way. Where are you guys at, man? I know we've gone to this to this other extreme where anything goes and, and we've kind of just completely erased the line. But where y'all at in this? Leave me a comment in the comments section below. Thank you for checking out this video. Also, make sure you head over to rapzilla.com and check out that freshman list. It's pretty fire. My man Jet Trouble's on there. What Up RG is on there. Bunch of the homies are on there, so check that out. And also be sure to check out the best of 2017. So once again, thank you for checking out this video. Stay tuned, subscribe, like, leave a comment. I'll see y'all soon. Peace.